Resurrect Eject Operation Channel Intro Hello fellow YouTubers, LadyWC Stop Motioner here, and here I have Transformers Studio Series 75 Deluxe Class Jolt. Kind of interesting with this figure. A lot of people have been really looking forward to this figure. Jolt seems to have quite a cult following despite only having 51 seconds of screen time. And I'm one of them, I'm one of the people that's really been looking forward to this guy. Because I really like the character design, it makes me really sad that he only had that little bit of screen time. When I first saw images of this figure, I wasn't completely won over. I know that the head sculpt is more accurate, but I thought the concept head kind of looked cooler. I'm not fully sure how I feel now, but this figure kind of won me over when I watched some of the reviews for it. And I finally have him. And I'm really looking forward to getting this guy out. So there he is on the side there. You can see him in his robot mode, his car mode, transforms in 23 steps. He is officially licensed. When Jolt uses his Electro Whips to link the Autobot leader with jet parts from Jetfire, Optimus Prime takes to the skies as Jet Power Optimus Prime. That was the one thing that Jolt did. He's a background character, and then suddenly he comes in and really contributes to saving the day. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He was a last minute inclusion, though, just meant to advertise the Chevy Bolt, which was an electric car, which is why he has electric powers. Pyramid Desert Battle. Up close to his face there. So, let's go ahead and get this guy open. There we go. Alright. He looks really awesome. So, I'm going to go ahead and get him out. Okay, so here we have Joel with his Dark of the Moon backdrop because why not I guess it says Revenge of the Fallen on it that's a Dark of the Moon backdrop I said this I said this in one of my previous videos and I'll say it again maybe they're trying to say that he should have been in Dark of the Moon I still don't know why he wasn't like I can forgive the fact that he was hardly in Revenge of the Fallen. He was the last minute inclusion. Okay, we'll have him more in the next movie. He wasn't in the next movie. And I think, like, the bull was a concept car. Like, it was being advertised in Revenge of the Fallen. But I don't think it came out until, like, 2010 or even 11, which was around the time Dark of the Moon was coming out. So, why wasn't he in that movie? I'm really ticked off about that, a lot more than I probably should be, but it really makes me mad. Anyway, figure itself is awesome. I probably, I really probably should not like this thing, but I love it. It's such an awesome figure. The car mode, some people could probably say it's a simple car mode, even boring. And yeah, I can see that it, it's... Not, nothing too spectacular, but I really like it. It's an electric car. It's got a nice color. Old translucent roof here. Although it certainly doesn't make me as nervous as it does with Dino. I just wish it said Volt on the back here. That's the only thing. Otherwise, you got the nice Chevy symbol there. Any rear taillights. Chevy symbol right there. Yeah, I mean, there's robot kibble. That's not too bad, though. Rolling is a bit of an issue, and this really proves something. See, these wheels in the front are pegged on. 
not really a whole lot of spin. These in the back are pinned on. You get a nice spin out of those. It's kind of a shame, but oh well. What are you gonna do? All right. So, oh hey, Optus. Tap you in the shop. Okay, so here, just random comparisons. Just a bunch of other Autobots. And they all look really cool. I really like how they look. Now, if you so choose, you can store his whips on the sides here. Kind of goofy. Could be a lot worse, though. At least there you could pretend it's skis, like I said. It definitely could be way worse. Now he does have a bit of an issue with everything fully tabbing in, like this right here. Otherwise though, he comes together fairly well. So, I think that covers the vehicle mode. Now for his transformation. His transformation makes me a little nervous at times, but like I say, compared to Dino, it's not really too bad. So to begin, you just kind of unpeg this front section, separate these. Just kind of want to get them separated. Angle this up. You just kind of want to fidget with this a little bit, like just pull, try to get this part separated. There we go. Then untab this right here if it didn't come untapped in the process. Disconnect right here. Hold the wheel down. Just take this, extend it. Take this section right here. And there's this part's gonna tab in right there. So you just fold it back like this. Then just do the same on this side. I don't know why my camera stand is not cooperating with me today. Okay, I think it's good. Okay, now this is one thing I do wanna point out. One of the tabs here, let me get this out. Stressed and snapped off. I'm honestly okay with that because it still tabs in just fine and honestly it's easier to tab together and untab but if that bothers you that's just something to look out for. Hold this up. Hold this section down. Then you just pull this right here like this. And the way I do this part, I just kind of disconnect this. Fold this section down right here. And just do the same right here. Fold this down. Now you're going to start messing with the translucent plastic. So basically just pull this down. Pull this back. I mean, you can tap it in, in the back, but you know, it's just a little too scary. I really don't want to finish that, so you just untab these right here. Just angle this. And then just kind of get everything straightened out. Now, this is all kind of a matter of preference. You can add this here. Or just tuck it in right here. I like it tucked in right there. And there's Jolt in his robot mode. 
And in all honesty, I love this robot mode. It's not perfect. I do want to get the little issues I have with it out of the way. Appearance wise, my only issue are these giant leg flaps. You can remove these, but I don't really feel like doing that. And I'm a little bit easier on the toy designers, given that they are trying to pull off a movie design, which, you know, pretty much does impossible things. So for what it's worth, I think they did a fairly decent job with this guy. Head sculpt. Okay, I guess there is another slight issue with how he is visually. There should be a little bit more blue paint on him. Now, a lot of people are probably still getting over this head sculpt just because all the toys and the, you know, his appearance in the comics have had the concept head. But this was how he looked in the movie. Even though you don't get a super good look at it. I like how one eye is kind of squinched a little bit. It, it adds a little bit of expression, and I, I love expression on my figures, so. Now, yes, he's got a backpack, but oh well. I really like the colors on him and just the details. I like how the front of the car just forms these things that stick out on the back. His chest, I mean, just look at all that good detailing. And then the fake wheels here. So this can kind of work, I guess, where you can have where this folds back and one of the wheels tucks up into to form the knees. See, it's got a translucent part right here. However, I think that's a separate piece. I'm not fully sure. His hands are very unique looking. Just all in all, I think they did a great job with the details on this figure. So, just bringing some other figures. Even though these two never met, I think they look really cool with each other. Here we got Sideswipe. Here's Jazz. And here's Bumblebee. And just a bunch of five Autobots, all who all look pretty cool. Makes me sad that that lineup never happened in the movies. Now I'm going to get into his accessories. Now I didn't really talk about them much earlier. These whips could be a lot better. Hasbro has had to compromise some figures' weapons, like the swords have had to be rubber. So why is it that this whip is a... I mean, it's not super hard, but... So it's a whip. They could have made this thing as rubbery as they wanted it to wanted to make it. And it's just a little stiff. And it could also use a lot of blue throughout it. But you know, third party companies, they're probably gonna get on making alternate whips, and they're probably gonna get on making a head based on the concept design. I don't think I'd buy the, either of those things, but it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of time. So to attach the whips, you just remove the finger. You can just tab it in right here. Theoretically, anyway. It's a little tough to get it in there. And you can also store the whips on there. I don't like that look, though. You can just peg them into his hands. Uh, I wish I had. I mean, I do have the Revenge of the Fallen Optimus, but I don't have a Jetfire, which is a shame, because I can't have him join them together. But, oh well. The whips still look fairly cool. I just wish they didn't stick out straight. Okay, now we can get into the articulation. Head is on a ball joint, it's a little limited, 
but again, I've come to expect that. Shoulders you can go up and down. Due to transformation, you have a little bit of, you can move them back a little bit if you lift up the back kibble anyway. They can go up like this. So fairly decent range of motion. You can rotate him right here. So that's nice. Got an elbow bend. It can bend a fair bit. Of course, it can bend back due to transformation, but why would you want to do that? Then again, due to transformation, you can fold the fists in like this. I don't really, I can't really complain about like lack of wrist rotation. I don't really need it. And he does actually have a waist swivel. That is greatly appreciated. Like, seriously, a lot of Studio Series figures seem to prioritize look and just get articulation if they can. At least that's how they used to be. Some of them still are, but... And then again, because of transformation, you do get a bit of an ab crunch. It's very weird ab crunch, but it still works. Then you have hips, which again, unfortunately, are a little hindered by the, very hindered by the kibble here, but oh well. You do get some in and out. You can go forward that far. Back a fair bit if you maneuver some things on him. Knee bend. Pretty good knee bend. And then this really weird part that's very tight. I don't know what's up with that. Is that just my copy or something? I don't know what the deal is with this. This, there we go. Get some bend right here, but I don't know why you'd really want to use that. It, do, it isn't a part of the transformation and we don't have any ankle tilt. I would have much rather had an ankle tilt than a rotation right there, but oh well. And then of course a little bit of foot articulation. So articulation isn't perfect, but it's not too bad either. I do like it. So, I think that covers this figure. So I'll go in and see if I can fit him on my movie display. All right, so there's Jolt with my pretty crowded movie display. I'm still kind of trying to get this display figured out. I'm, I had something else going on with Bludgeon. I still have him, he's just not there at the moment. But either way, Studio Series Jolt. This figure seems to have been pretty anticipated by a lot of fans. And overall, I say he's pretty awesome. He's not perfect, but I really like a lot of things about him. I think if you can find him in stores that you should pick him up. I think you'll really enjoy him. And yeah, whips. I don't know if I'll display him with the whips or not. So, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and God bless.